Ding 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 Bubble time. It is bubble time. My name is Teresa Tomey. And I am Patrick Ziegler. And we are Bubble Entertainment. Yes, and this is Bubble Time. This is Bubble Time. You want to hear it again? Compliments of Darius Colquitt. Isn't that fun? It's so fun. It was so nice of him to do that. It was really cute. Yay. We got to get that. the one from, from Jesse and Amy, too. I know. Did you get the one from Jesse and Amy? No, they didn't send it. Um, uh, <laughs> Kevin said, as Fred Stella said last week, let's bubble. Let's I love that. Bubble. I love that. Kevin, who is our guest, just got a cool uh, display. Did you see that? Yes, in, I saw that in New York. It's amazing. It's a, I think in Grand we have Central. The best guests. What's that? I think it was in Grand Central Station is where it is. So awesome. Kevin, type in where 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 it is, where that our millions of viewers can that live in New York. Port Authority. Okay. Port Authority? Oh, Port Authority. Cool. Yeah, Isn't very cool? fun. Yeah. Yeah, it was His fun. Stitchery. Yes. Very cool stuff. Um, we actually have a guest. We were a little nervous, but we got her. She's in the green room waiting to come forward. She is, uh, what a dynamo. I just love how she's going to be on our show and we promoted it and she promoted it. I'm like, this woman is successful for a lot of reasons. Uh, talent first and foremost, but also work in the business, man, work in the business. You know, in artist way that I facilitate, they say, uh, Julia Cameron says, quite often, it's audacity more than talent that moves somebody forward. So to be audacious uh, in this business, you have to be. If yeah. you sit back, somebody else that's more audacious, not auspicious, but audacious, <laughs> will move forward. Yeah. And, um, you have to. And she, I think, has that in a great way. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let me tell you a little bit about this wonderful human being. Cheryl Dupre began her acting and modeling career as a child in her native state of California after being discovered in a school play in a suburb of LA. I love that she's got discovered in quotes. We've got to figure out what that's all about. She was granted <laughs> scholarships to study acting, which led to her being cast in educational films. She later moved to Michigan and continued acting in numerous stage plays, uh, for which she received two grand award nominations, receiving one for, I believe it was Lost in Yonkers. Yes. Um, she's been in industrial films, commercials, and movies. She uh, participates um, or has participated in projects that have won an Emmy uh, and numerous film festival awards. Wonder who that Emmy is for. She is best known for playing Dean Kane's wife in Horse Camp and Kevin Sorbo's girlfriend in Rodeo Girl. Uh, you can check her out on IMDb and just Google her name. You'll see the, the plethora of work she has. And a couple of her, I love this too, um, a couple of the things that she's done uh, have ended up on, uh, her photos have ended up on printed uh, play uh, dr dramatic scripts. So we'll have to ask her about that as well. Uh, so please join us in giving a warm welcome, clap at home for Cheryl Dupre. Dupre. Yay, Yay, Cheryl. Yay, Cheryl. Uh -oh. Feedback. Uh -oh. Feedback. You getting feedback? What do I need to do? <laughs> do you have another screen open? Do you have another screen open? Such as? Technology is not my forte. She's been having a little technical She's been having challenge, a little technical today. challenge today. You don't have your phone still you on. You don't have your no. phone still on. No. No. You're getting feedback from. We're hearing a re an echo. We're echoes. hearing a re an echo. Oh, okay. Are you not hearing it? Are you not hearing it? No, I'm not. Not on my end. Weird. Let me is your take, phone still on? take you out and bring you back in. Take you out and bring you back in. Okay. Now are we getting it now? 
No, we're not getting that. Real time. They're seeing real time production. Hmm? They're seeing real time production uh, <laughs> work. <laughs> Hold on, I'm going to remove you. Okay. Add you back in. Oh, you switched. There we go. Test. Talk, Cheryl. Can, Talk, you, Cheryl. can you hear me now? We can hear you, we can but hear we're me. hearing ourselves in echo, which is weird. Do you have some magic microphone set up somehow? Do you have a Mr. Microphone in there? Let me check my audio. Test, test. Test, test. Well, well. How about now? Is that better? That's a different. Yes. Is that better? I don't yeah. hear. I don't hear me. Okay. I think I just had to tell it a different mic to use. This is not what I normally use. I have my little sound studio downstairs uh, that I do voiceover work in, and that's where I was hoping to do this. And the lighting is much better too. <laughs> uh, but um, my son is living yeah our basement right now so he's down there and also um i'm a first time mac user so i'm still learning like i didn't know how that worked with uh just... and there's your son <laughs> <laughs> that happened with somebody else i think it was um joey plager, joey plager. his yeah. son came walking down the step jo joey's a producer for hallmark movies so you know it happens to everybody. You're Carol. in good company. And he had a pizza delivered while we were uh, interviewing him. So. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> <laughs> well, Cheryl Dupre, it's so nice to have you with us. It's nice to see you. And we are thrilled that you're here. I love that. He picked up the cat. That's, That's his cat. Haku. Nice. Aww. Nice. Well, you look great. Great to have you here. Despite the lighting, but thank you. Thanks for having me. Sorry for the technical difficulties for everyone who might be watching. <laughs> You've got a nice fan base who's uh, who's said they would show up, so that's nice. If anyone wants to teach me the ropes of how to use Mac, I'm <laughs> Hey, you you're know, here, and it's that, and then you know, COVID shut everything down, and they didn't offer like on Zoom or anything. So I'm kind of learning myself. But we didn't come here to talk about that. So what do you, what would you want to know? <laughs> we came here to talk about you. I'm not used to and that. Shelly, <laughs> Shelly Irwin is here. How wonderful is that present? Yay, my Yana sister. Thanks, Shelly. Yay. Well, Cheryl, uh, I don't know if you've seen Fumble Time. And we uh, always start out with um, a general question that we do for most guests. And it is, when do you, how do you, where did you remember getting getting bitten by the theater entertainment bug? Wow. Um, I, it started for me even as a kid. As, as you said, I was discovered. <laughs> and I put that in quotation marks because to this day, I still don't know like who or how or why. But um, I did a play at school and somebody saw it. Next thing I knew, they somebody else was paying for me to take acting classes, even though I was like 10 or something. Um, so... Probably from the first time I was on stage, which maybe even was in third grade. I don't know. I, mean, I loved it. I didn't know if I knew I would make a, a job out of it. But um, I, I remember were... watching Bull Dur no, 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 no. Raging Bull. Uh, Raging Bull? And, and thinking, I, I just, they, I was so absorbed in what I was seeing that um, I was like literally reacting, like answering. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I want to do that. <laughs> How old were you when you were watching Raging Bull? <laughs> that was later. Oh, I'm like, when I was 11 years old watching Raging Bull, I'm like, no, Wait. no, no. I, I was thought a for a moment, yeah. but I just I thought for a moment it was a school production of Raging yeah. Bull. Yeah, but I was already auditioning for films and things before that. So, but that's when it was like, oh, yeah, this is really what I want to do. And what was the educational? So you went on to do. So they they kind of plucked you these mysterious people who put you into acting classes and stuff like that. Um, so they were like a management team or something. Is that what it, I have no idea to this. You day. don't remember. I was 10. All I know is that, I mean, they gave me like a little medal and a certificate and said, you know, we're going to pay for you to do this. And 
I, I don't know who that was. <laughs> so if anyone's watching, thank you. I mean, that's got me where I am today, or at least was You story. never found out who it was? I was no, I mean, I don't know if my parents did, but Oh my gosh. All I know is they told me, hey, you, you can take these classes and somebody else is gonna pay for it, which is great because I don't know if my parents could have. <laughs> you know that um, that happened to Carol Burnett. And um, she she does know who it is, but it was under the stipulation that she never would reveal the name, and she's never ever revealed the name. Quite possible. Maybe she did that for me. I like that because ah. <laughs> she was one of you know, somebody I idolized growing up too. So. And that was part of the stipulation. She had to give back. So you never know. It there, it could have been. My story, I can tell it any way I want to, and I'm going to go. Right. <laughs> I, I'm going to say it was Carol Burnett, so let's <laughs> let's just have fun with that. <laughs> well, I think that is so great. Uh, Tracy, do you want to ask the next? Uh, um, yes, absolutely. I just want to know um, what, I think I was starting to go down that track, in terms of what, do you even remember these educational videos? And do you remember, like, going, I really like, like, I really like this. I mean, what was the educational videos? Do you, do you even have them? Like, what were they? Do you remember? Yeah, that was so long ago. Like I said, I was 10, 12. Um, and then I was asked for other things. Uh, at one point in time, they, I have two younger sisters. They were going to cast my mom as my mom. And they wanted my sisters to be like in a classroom situation too. My mom was kind of afraid of that, even though it wasn't called that. But the casting couch, the Me Too, you know, stuff. Um, so she kind of tried to keep me away from that. That particular film we didn't do. Um, she uh -huh. had a business trip she had to take and then eventually, you know, we moved away and then I moved to Michigan and I didn't know where to go like, when I came to Michigan. So um, surprisingly, I was working for an insurance company, which it was, uh, where the second, where the offices of Civic Theater are right now. Um, and I oh, really? Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah, she talked about that in the documentary, yeah. Yeah, and I thought, Oh, they're having auditions. Well, I guess I'll go audition. And, and so Paul Dreher cast me, and um, and then I got the bug to do more theater. And, and so that was a that was a so I mean it's interesting too because you talk about you were in California, but it's not like you were in LA. I mean you're a we I lived like, in like a I don't know if you call it a suburb suburb of LA, like um, Hacienda Heights, La Puente area, which you know this was. 40 years ago, <laughs> they're going to be 40 plus years ago. So it's different than it probably is now, but yeah. Um, yeah, it's a, dry, it's a dry, it's just, but it's not that you're in the heart of LA trying yeah, to bust yeah. into this business, no. which is interesting. So you came to Grand Rapids, so you had, did you do, remind me, did you do theater in high school? Mm -hmm. Yep, I took drama in high school. But then you came to Michigan at how, and you were how old when you came this direction? Uh, initially, I was 16. My parents okay. were getting divorced, and my dad was from Grand Rapids. And so I came with him. But then I was kind of back and forth for a few years until um, I met a guy in a bar and got married. And <laughs> <laughs> a, good, a, a good guy. You met the right guy in a bar. If you got to meet a guy in a bar, I mean, it, was, it's been 35 years, and it's it's working so far <laughs> and you know when i did i kind of stepped away from theater for a few years too i was working full-time during the day going to school at night got married had kids and so i took 12 years off from theater and actually it was my husband's brother john dupre who many of you probably know um he was on the board of directors for heritage theater group and he was going to be directing his first show and he knew i used to act so he's like hey you come audition for me and he cast me, and so then I got the bug again. And, and what was that role? Sorry, what was, what was that role? Yeah, George. Um, it was a series of George Bernard Shaw one acts, and it was how he lied to her husband. Gotcha. Wow. I so didn't that realize was... you were gone that long. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because you and I actually were in the actors' workshop. Yeah. Way back when, um, but yeah, then I took twelve years off. And wow. So it was between act. So you had already been in actors workshop. Then you took 12 years off and then you went back in again. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then it was after that. And of course, you know, Maureen, um, always you know, say, give me headshots. I can get you work. And I did and she did. And so well, th that's a good segue to our next question. You went from paid talent to, uh, well, no, um, 
you went from community theater to paid talent in um, commercials and short films and things like that. Is that how that right. worked? Yeah. And Marie, Maureen Dreher actually connected with you about it. Mar yeah. For those out there, Maureen Dreher is a casting director in um, Grand Rapids who's wonderful. Yeah, she's, she's probably responsible for me um, making the switch from theater to film and commercial work. Originally starting with like Amway stuff way back in like the I or eighty six, I don't know, something like that. I did I did some of those. Yeah. Um and then like I said I took twelve years off and then went back to it and um slowly made you know, went back to theater and then went back to doing film and commercial and this was and, 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 and no Oh, that's... We got a big question from Fred Stella. <laughs> Hello, Ms. Dupre. I'm just a random fan of Fubble and your work. Obviously, a telegenic woman such as yourself must have performed a number of torrid love stage scenes on stage and screen. I'm curious if you'd be willing to share who your favorite leading man has been to, been up to this point in your career. Well, on stage, I'd have to say it was some guy named Fred. Um, really? Oh, it was for Stella. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> he was such a gentleman. That's uh, hilarious. Was film, that um Le Les on Danger Rouge? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Somebody you did that at um you did that at uh, uh and dog, the dog, story. Um, dog story, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. So I, I want to know Cheryl story. I want to know Cheryl with all your kind of going back and forth, and I, I'm sure I know the answer to this, but for people, you know, we just like to explore the creative process. Um, and talk about creativity, and that's what we're all about here. Is there a different approach that you have between going when you're looking at a theater role versus looking at a screen role? I mean, you're one of the few people in this town who has had success in both. As far as choosing a role or as far as? Uh, maybe both, choosing and approaching. Yeah. Yeah, it would be interesting. Yeah. Both. Well, the film, there's a lot fewer film roles in Michigan. I mean, my dad likes to say you'd be a lot further if you didn't live here, which I yeah. like to believe. <laughs> um, and I keep saying, well, now that my kids are grown, I can go anywhere, right? Um, yeah. This was a much better place to raise a family, and I think, like to think I did fairly well for being here. I mean, um, yeah. Did I answer your question? No, not at all. So <laughs> how, do you, how do you approach... Oh, sorry. That's right. I guess like my brain, I hadn't eaten. So, um, yeah, so there's a lot fewer roles uh, for film in Michigan anyway. Um, I have agents in Michigan, in Chicago, and in California. And so there are different also websites, Actors Access. You know, you can see where roles are posted or they can send them to you. And it's a lot different now because now we can self-tape auditions. And before, you had to be willing to go there and actually go back if you got a call back. Right. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's just a different approach. As far as theater versus film, theater, you know, I used to be able to look in the newspaper and it listed all the auditions. Obviously, that's not an option anymore. So, um and I've become a lot more picky about theater roles and just because it takes so much time and it is not usually paid. So um, in that respect, I tend to look for more film roles and to do theater only if it's something I would really want to do or a really interesting role or a fun show. And we did Calendar Girls and it was just like, that just looked like it'd be fun to do with my friends. And it was. <laughs> um, That's interesting. Um, and I, I'm wondering if you played the role, but Kevin has a question because you, uh, what's the one role you'd most like to play on stage? That is a good question. And for many, many years, the answer was the Wicked Witch of the West, which is kind of, ah. because it's a musical and I don't usually audition for musicals. Um, that was like my dream role. Don't ask me why, I guess just because I love the, the movie so much growing up as a kid. And But I also do a great Wicked Witch impression. Nice. <laughs> and, uh, but then I did Medea. For, it was a collaboration between Heritage Theater Group and uh, Grand Valley, and uh, she kills her children. So, you know, I figured that was a little more wicked than the Wicked Witch. So maybe I'm. <laughs> so maybe. Well, you re you recently did another role. Was that a a, a dream role of yours to do um, Blanche? It was. Um, I, I auditioned for that when Heritage Theater Group did it back in 2005, I think. Oh wow. And uh, 
got the call back, but did not get cast. Did get a call from the director, which is very rare, telling me he loved my audition, and he knew I'd be great with it, but why he was going to be went. So, so for those, uh, Kevin and everybody else, um, she, just before COVID, right? Wasn't it just before During COVID? COVID. It's actually the last show that um, both opened and finished its run and closed at the Grand Rapids Civic Theater before COVID shut everything down. They did open Matilda right after that, but opening weekend, they had to shut down. So I was, that's kind of gonna be a trivia question later on is mm -hmm. what was the last show that actually opened and closed before they shut down? And it was so you got to perform the whole thing. So you got to do the I whole did. run of Streetcar Named Desire at the Civic Theater in Grand Rapids, which is an amazing theater um in its own right and yeah this is a what an 800 900 seat theater or something i think it's about 750 seats yeah yep. um, that yep. was one of, i served on their board for a few years um but i've seen many plays there for in people watching that i i actually have preferred some of the shows i've seen there to the production the broadway tour production that i've seen they do their work is that good yeah well their ragtime the last time they did ragtime was just Beautiful. Incredible. Um, so yeah, but I didn't answer his question, or did I? <laughs> yeah, I think right. so, but I still you have a second witch. part of that. But I still want to know, as an actor, do you approach the role differently from a process standpoint? Um, a lot of it is the same, and it's just uh, you know, stage everything is so much bigger, and so I feel like you use a lot more. There's a lot more movement, a lot more of your body involved with it, whereas. Um, film everything's you know right here and it has to be like you're talking to someone right there so it's a lot more you know i remember a few years back i gave someone my resume and he looked at it and he saw my theater and he's like oh your theater we'll have to tone you down i'm like did you look at the film work because i did that too <laughs> um, so yeah in that respect it's i mean i think you could there's no replacement for doing theater as far as learning it's a great place to learn and get experience. Um, but then, like I said, you just kind of minimize it and tone it down. And learning like angles and things like that um, with the camera. Um, not, uh, not really into the camera. <laughs> so. so on that same, you know, talking about your uh, career, also you do voiceover as well. Um, can you share a little bit about that experience and what you what's your process with that? You know, the whole industry is changing. So like I, in the past, most of the voiceover work I had done, I had done at studios, uh, SoundCloud Studios and a couple other studios. And then of course, during COVID, everything was being recorded at home. So as I said, I set up my own um, recording studio in the house. Um, and so now I do it from there, um, which was a fun and interesting process. I'm still learning probably how to use I know, obviously, I know how to use the equipment, but everybody uses a different system. So, as we learned today, <laughs> I've got, I still have <laughs> to learn. Did yeah. you take any classes in voiceover? Have you done that at all? I haven't. That's probably going to be the next thing I do. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, my husband, who does voiceover, just attended a session from an audiobook company that he does some work for, and they said that... Um, the next thing in voiceover is going to be AI, that artificial intelligence is going to start doing more and more voiceover. So yeah, they good. said not right away, but in, you know, not, maybe not in your lifetime, but in your kids' yeah. lifetime, their, their kids, there's going to not be voiceover work. They'll, they'll, they'll pay you residuals for the tone of your voice, for the sound of your voice. So oh my gosh. you're able to praise voice, but it'll yeah. be all fabricated just as in the way they call Siri <laughs> yeah 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 or the you know on the GPS thing <laughs> yeah yeah really 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 crazy um do you do you prefer one one more than the other the the is there any that you like I said I tend to lean towards doing more film and commercial work but that's mostly because it's shorter time commitment and it pays um <laughs> But I can't say that I would ever want to do just that. I can't, you know, even if I was a series regular on the show, I'd like to think at some point in time I'd go back to the stage just because it's different. Yeah, I think once you have it in your blood, I don't know how people would not want to 
do yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, it's just so different. You, you get an immediate feedback from an audience. You know what you're reaching someone where, and you get one shot to get it right <laughs> every night for that particular audience because right. that's the performance they're going to see. Whereas, you know, film, we could do, I think I have a video on my, um, it's on my website or my Facebook page, um, my acting Facebook page, but it's like one line done eight different ways. Um, and you, that sometimes happens, you know, you just do that so many different ways and then they, the director or whoever decides in editing which one they're going to use, you know, or which one they like. So. Do you feel like the, um, the incentives, you know, the film incentives going away, do you feel like that? affected you and uh, I know it affected production uh, quite a bit, but how, how did it affect you personally? It definitely slowed down. I do think that I've seen it kind of come back. I think uh, initially everybody's like, oh, well, you know, and the, the stupid thing is Michigan has such, we have a few really good film schools and you yeah. like, hey, come here, learn how to make films. Now get the hell out, you know, right. <laughs> go right. And, and that's so sad. Um, so I think people initially did that. They're like, well, I guess I'll have to go to LA. I'll have to go to Atlanta or wherever the jobs are. Right. Or, but now I'm seeing kind of more and more people. Well, there's a lot more independent films being made here. And I think people are like, more and more people are like, you know, what? I just have to learn to roll with it. Kind of like we've done with COVID. You learn different ways of doing things. And I have a story to tell, so I'm going to do it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I um, I know for me, I'm now I'm in LA trying to dip my toes into that water that you've been swimming in for a long time, and uh, I don't have a reel or anything. And I've seen a couple of seen a couple of like tutorials online, and then just chatted with somebody yesterday who's a casting person, and she's like, "Go write your own material and shoot your own reel." And Everybody's saying that now. Just Create your own content. Create your own content. and put, It's just crazy. I'm like, we could do the play you wrote, Patrick, <laughs> 20 years ago. You know what I mean? Or 30, 30 years ago. Um, yeah, it's just such a, it's such a different, yeah, there you go. Yeah. It's such a different world out there in terms of how the industry is approached. Has your, has your experience just in general been like, I guess, tell me, tell me, how theater and how this life has um has it benefited you i mean what what do you think theater has brought to your life oh wow that's a great question um i it's funny because i think when i took like 12 years off from theater at some point in time that i kind of lost my sense of self i think i mean this is i'm kind of deep i guess but um, and when I went back to it, I've, I've just, I've grown as a person. I mean, you learn a lot through stories, but I've also just kind of friendships. I mean, some of my best friends that are like family to me have met in the theater community. And even people that I don't maybe necessarily regularly keep in contact with, um, like just the connections that we've made, you are a family for at least if not, if not longer, it was the period, that period of the run. I mean, you see them every night, probably more than your own family. So, um, yeah, that's probably the, the biggest thing. But also, you know, you make connections too. You know, even like doing uh, student films for film schools, meet people and you do student films, which is what I did initially when I was making the switch from commercial or from theater to film. Um, and that's how you get got stuff from my reel then when you weren't creating your own content. Um, and, uh, but then later, some of those people who have gone on to make other material, be it in films or industrial films, reached out to me later and, and gave me paid jobs, so. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, go ahead, Patrick. It's always one of the things that I say when I'm ever talking to, you know, young actors or young, people that are getting into production or whatever it is, it's always like, be nice to the person that um, uh, is at the front desk when you go to a meeting, because that person within a few months will be look the person you want to talk to because they'll be hiring you. Yeah. They always say, be, be nice to everybody because you never know when they might be your boss. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so true. And um, speaking of which, have you, you've been the boss, you've produced as well, right? 
Not much, but yes, I have a few times. Yeah. And how? I how I got to uh, cast a film for the first time. That was. Oh, show. you did. I did. Um, and unfortunately, it wasn't a production company that I had worked with before, so I didn't really know how they operated. I didn't know them very well, but it was a great learning experience. I did get to use a lot of people that uh, I've known, you know, in film and commercial and theater in the past. Um, but it was also right. great to be on the other side. It was like, oh, now I get it. You know, I've seen, I had some people that were cast that ended up backing out last minute because they had some other thing. <laughs> it was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you definitely learn how to behave on that and see what it's like on that side. I'll never forget, real quick, we have some questions for you, but I'll never forget the first time I went in. I hadn't auditioned, I hadn't acted in a long time or been to an audition in a long time. And I'd always been behind the desk and I went to a audition in Chicago and I literally walked in the room and started to walk towards behind the desk. And I was like, oh, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be on this side now. Um, we're getting all these questions all of a sudden. Great. Uh, and Emil just said, you never know when you will be on the other side of someone's desk, which is just what yeah. Patrick just said. So Denise, um, uh, Asked, how did you come to be involved in Lost Heart? Uh, actually, I had been asked to audition for that production company for another film a couple of years before and didn't end up doing that film. In that particular instance, they had an actress who was cast in a role and then had a conflict. They didn't think she was going to be able to do it, so they had me audition. And ultimately, that actress ended up doing the role anyway, so I did not do that film. But the director liked what he saw, and actually after that, he cast me in a commercial, bank commercial in Lansing. And then later, um, the production company, who I give them a little uh, shout out here, are filming, um, I think it's called Last Night in Algoma right now. They're filming another film. Um, Silent, Silent Night. Silent Night, that's it, sorry. Sorry, thank you for correcting me, because I didn't want to put that's it out. That's with Ma there. Melissa's involved with that, Melissa right? Melissa Unshoots, yeah. She yeah. and I uh, had... I'm trying to remember which we came first. We did a student film together, and then we also did an acting class together. And um, she's part of that production team. And, um, nice. So they came to me later and, and asked me to submit for, for Lost Heart. That's always, you show up. I mean, I... Right. Uh, and that's another example of being nice to people and you know, yeah, <laughs> you don't know yeah. when they can come back later. And actually, got, for several awards at the International Christian Film Festival, which we went to. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's I saw right. some of your pictures on that. That's amazing. Is that the one that Don Most is in? Yes. Oh. Yeah, he was huh. a supporting actor for that at the Christian. Yeah. Um, uh, we're going to approach him about being on Fubble Time, actually. Um, and then Denise wants to know, in which school play in L.A. were you in? Oh. Was that, that wasn't Raging Bull, the high school musical. No, no, no. <laughs> We did a few. Um, I remember I played Pandora. It was like, it was this Greek things, um, you know, Pandora's box. Um, Aphrodite. Um, and then there was like a historical thing trying to teach us. I don't even remember the names of them. <laughs> like, like Teresa yeah. got to play Betsy Ross. High school, we did the uh, Guess Who's Coming to Earth Tonight um, and Pink Panther. Oh great. my gosh. That's so funny. Guess who's coming to Earth tonight? That's hilarious. Yeah, um, I, I see another Ted, one. Tedrick is coming to dinner. And at first I had to look at it twice to make sure it wasn't the same show. Uh, Tedrick's asking, you've done some really esoteric stuff like puppets and children's show, voiceover, serious acting on stage and film. Is there anything you haven't tried that you wanna, wanted to try? So maybe a type of role or a type of... Um, that's a great question, Ted. Ted I I knew Ted from way back in the puppet theater, I think. Um, what have I not? I just, I mean, there's just different, every year it's something different. Like I hadn't gotten to play Blanche and then I got to do that. Um, when I did uh, Rosie's Rescue, I'd never played a cop before, I got to do that. So I'm, I'm just looking for some different things like I have, that I haven't done before. Um, I guess I would eventually like to do a musical um, nice. Because I, well, I used to be afraid of that. And I would literally go into a musical audition because I wanted to audition for musicals and movies. And I would choke. Like, I think it was Peter Pan many, many years ago at Civic. I went in and I was like, 
<laughs> that's what came out. Um, but I, I know psychologically where that comes from. Um, way back, you know, elementary school, middle school, I was in choir. And um, for eighth grade graduation, they chose a quartet of us to sing. And the day before the graduation ceremony, the choir director called me in and told me that um, one of the girls had asked that I not sing with them. And he did not tell me who, and he did not tell me why, um, which to my 12 year old psyche was just crushing. Mm. Um, and so for the next and 20 years, 12. It was 12, yeah. Seriously, let the so girl sing. Good for God. the next 20 years, I wouldn't sing in the shower if anyone was in the house. I wouldn't sing in the car if that car could see my lips move. Um, it really, really messed with my head. And so I just assumed that I couldn't sing. But now, you know, after years of going to, uh, karaoke with theater friends and first you know i don't know how many years is just watching and listening i, I can't do that they're they're really good I, I can't do that um now i actually have people asking me to sing songs and nice sing it again. And i did audition for mama mia at civic and i did get called back so it couldn't have been ah. so yeah eventually probably a musical time Kind of well, you are you are one of those people who works the business. I mean, I have seen you work it. Like the fact that you're like, yeah. I did. I was crushed as a child, but darn it, I did karaoke, and now I've done. You know, like I see you <laughs> constantly. You are such an inspiration in terms of how you've just been like relentless in your pursuit of your passion, which is just really lovely. And a couple quick things. Shelly wants to know if you ever plan on writing a play that is awesome. or directing. Yes. Um, actually, Flat River Community Players had asked me to direct 20 years ago, maybe. Um, and at the time, I said no, because I didn't think it would be fair to either the actors or the audience to have someone who hadn't directed before or even assistant directed before to do that, because I didn't study theater in college as a psych major. Um, but then after that, I did an assistant directive for um, It's Under Night Stream at um, Cornerstone. Um, oh, cool. And so, yes, I would like to do that eventually. I don't know about writing a play. I'm, now, as we talked about creating your own content, I have some stories to tell, so I may do that. Maybe eventually that would lead to the play. But um, for now, that's not, on the, it's not necessarily on the bucket list, but I wouldn't say no. Um, I am taking an actor's workshop. Um, I got an acting class out of Detroit. Um, we'll go to Erie Art Studio. And sometimes he has us write our own monologues. And uh, so oh, wow. Or write them for other actors. We've done both. And um, I've been told I'm good at writing. And so now I used to actually really, really enjoy writing until I took a writing class at GRCC. Well, actually, it was GRJC then. But, um, and I, are you, are you I taking that class. acting class in person or on Zoom? On Zoom. Um, okay, but, cool. Yeah, I, took that writing class and I didn't like the fact that it was like, you have to write every single day. And then just the fact that I was made to do it, it kind of took it out of me, the desire out of me. So then I didn't want to for many years, but now, now that I've been doing it for this class and yeah, I'm like, well, right. good question. Uh, Denise says, uh, taking back just a, ha just a hot second, please do a musical, do what you're afraid of. And then she said, Patrick taught me that. I think it's only a matter of time, Denise. Maybe we can do it together. <laughs> Denise is in Naples, Florida. She's uh, she's part of my Artist Way uh, classes Same that way. I facilitate, awesome. which is, she did, um, I do an improv class. I think I've connected with you about that, that um, improv, Power of Now, and she had never done improv yeah. before, and she showed up and did it, and it was great. So. That's great. You got to be fearless in this business. And, and, and with that, we'll wrap things up. Cause we're I know we're at 45, 45 minutes. Five. Wow. Yeah. Um, boom. Just like that. Um, you are, you are fearless. And like I, like I just such a, um, <laughs> Ted Snyder just said, do wicked without James Corden. <laughs> he yeah. must be, I bet he signed the petition. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Uh, it, I, I just have, really um, such deep respect for how you approach the craft, how you have been a good person through the whole, through all of it and, and just continue to succeed. It's just, it's really fun to watch your journey out there. Like it's, thank you. And it's just, um, it's a learning process. And I remember when I first 
when I first came to Grand Rapids, I was in Miss Green Grand Rapids concert. <laughs> and everybody was doing their singing or their dancing, and I did a monologue. Um, and I remember hearing somebody say, oh, she thinks she's an actress. And then, you know, what I, part of the reason I took the 12 years off from theater is um, it was kind of a tight clique of people. Yeah. And, you know, I was told no a lot. And you have to get thick skinned and just totally not listen to those people. The people who tell you that you're either that you're not good or that you shouldn't do it. And sometimes it's people who are jealous, which could have been the situation with the girl singing in school. Yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah. But if it's something you want to do, do it. And then if you don't know how, learn it. And that's kind of what I've been doing is just kind of learning my way. I didn't know how, you know, when I first started switching to a film, it's like, okay, how do I do my resume for a film? How do I get the footage for my reel? Um, you know, and where, where do you go? And, and just all kinds of stuff. And then, so it's just been a learning process. But I just always want to learn more and do better. Well, if nice. you want to sing and you want to write, I think Rebecca Donald's just come up with your uh, one woman show called Cured by Karaoke. <laughs> I like it. Maybe that's what I will write. <laughs> Very good. Thanks, Rebecca. Well, Carol, it has just been a delight to have you with us. Thank you so much for joining us on this celebratory theater month. Uh, certainly, you cross the gamut of theater and stage and screen, yes. and VO, and all, all things talent. Um, yeah but it's great to have you with us. Thank you for having me. Just Thank you very much for sharing, Denise. Says. So <laughs> stay in the green room. Thanks for everyone who came. Don't, don't run away. We'll, we'll be okay. right with you. Thanks. All right. Bye. Oh my gosh. So, I mean, seriously, I was thinking like we should post her to um, like Grand Valley and those, and you know, people trying to break into it locally just to show you like you can be successful if this is how you know, right. much you right. work on it. Um, with that, who's coming next week? Lynn Brown Tepper. Lynn Brown Tepper. Is executive director of Grand Rapids Circle Theater and an actress in her own right as well. So uh, that'll be a fun, great conversation. We've known her for many years and then she had a life in LA uh, and we lived at the Starlet. <laughs> together so. uh -oh, gonna be a little old home week going on it might be just a little bit who knows yes so, very much oh goody shelly for sure for sure well thank oh, yes, you yes your interview shelly just interviewed her which was amazing which was fantastic oh, so great. well thank you so much for joining us we appreciate you stopping by and with that gotta go <laughs> <laughs>